Houdini is a node-based 3D animation digital content creation software. Because everything in Houdini is node-based, it can be tricky for some people to understand the software. While nodes may be initially harder to learn, once you understand their logic, it can make solving complex problems easier than other methods like layer-based editing or software where you do not have full access to nodes. Layer-based editing is easy to understand. Programs like Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere, and any other basic video or photo editing software are typically layer-based. If you want a layer to be on top of another layer, you simply put that layer on top of the other layers. Here in Photoshop, we have a photo of a dog and a photo of a cat. In the layer editor, I could change the order of the layers which will affect which photo is on top in the viewer. Nodes work a bit differently. Data is passed from one node to the next by connecting the output of one node into the input of another node. Nodes are usually placed vertically or horizontally. In the example, we have a box node. In order to move the box, we must place a transform node. The transform node will alter the position of the box. I can also change the color of the box by using a color node. Let's take a look at one of my favorite nodes, the switch node. This node allows for multiple inputs. You could change which input is being used by adjusting the slider to switch between inputs. Here we have a box, a sphere, and a tube all going into the switch node's input. I could use a slider to switch between inputs to use a different shape. As cool as this is, the switch node's true power comes from being able to switch inputs based on attributes. What are attributes? An attribute is a piece of data such as a number value that we can store on the geometry. To illustrate this, I will create a grid. If we remember from before, the switch node will switch inputs based on whatever integer the slider is on. We're going to do the same thing, just using an integer attribute instead of the slider. So let's add an attribute adjust integer node. By default, it is just creating an attribute called variant with a value of zero. We can actually visualize this in the viewport. If I go to the node info, I can click on an attribute to visualize it. Immediately, we see the grid change color. However, this is not helpful because we want to see the number. Let's edit the visualizer and switch from color to marker. Now we see a bunch of zeros where each point is. I can also check this by going to the geometry spreadsheet and checking the value of this attribute. Our goal is to randomly copy objects to each of these points by using the variant attribute to control the switch node. Let's create a copy to points node. We'll also create a box node and wire everything together. Now we have a box copy to each point of the grid. This is great, but we want to randomize our copies. So let's create another object to copy and wire both of our objects into the switch node. We could switch between the box and the sphere, but if I put the display flag in the copy to points node, the only thing that we see is the box. I'm going to go back to the attribute adjust integer. Every value is set to zero. Since we want the switch to happen between two objects, we need some points to have a value of zero and some to have a value of one. Any point with a value of zero will copy a box and any point with a value of one will copy a sphere. We will change the pattern type to random and set the max value to one. Now we have random values of zero and one. I'll set the display flag back to the copy to points node. Our box is still the only thing being copied. This is because we need to actually tell the switch node to examine each point, check the value, and switch objects based on that value. To examine each point, we need a for each point loop. This will allow the switch node to have a different input for each point. Somehow we need to get our attribute into the switch node. Even though the switch node isn't connected to the attribute adjust integer node, we can still get data from it by going to the gear icon and hitting create spare input. Now I can drag the attribute adjust integer into the spare input and it automatically adds a path to that node and creates a wire indicating the connection. However, this isn't exactly what we need. We need the attribute once it has entered the for loop. So instead, drag the for each begin into the spare input. Now we can see that the switch node is now included in the for loop. One final step to get our attribute into the switch node. We will use the expression point to recover our integer. So I will erase zero and add our expression. And there we go. Now our switch input is switching based on our attribute. We can randomize the look by selecting our attribute adjust integer node and changing the seed value. This is great, 
But suppose we want to add another object. Let's create a tube and wire it into our switch node. Why did nothing change? Well, now we added a third input, but our attribute was only between 0 and 1. To fix it, go to the attribute adjust integer node and set the max to 2. Oh, now it's fixed. But let's say we want to add or remove another object. If only there was a way to automatically set the max value. I will select the switch node and edit the parameter interface. Here I can add my own integer, which will be the number that we need for the max value. Again, we will use an expression. The expression OPN inputs will count the max number of inputs. We can see our expression evaluates to 3. Let's right click this and select Copy Relative References. Go back to the Attribute Adjust Integer node and select Paste Relative References on the max value. This will add an expression that looks to our max input parameter we just created. Unfortunately, there is one small problem. The issue is that our max value should be 2 and not 3. This is because OPN inputs counted that there were 3 inputs, but our values here start at 0, not 1. To fix this, simply subtract 1 from our value, and now everything is fixed. I can now add another object, or remove an object, and it automatically updates everything. And this is why I love Houdini. It allows you to create setups like this where you can change the input or values and it will automatically update the results. In case you were wondering, there are actually much simpler ways of randomly copying geometry. The reason I chose this method of using the switch node was to showcase the possibilities and help visualize how geometry attributes can be used to create powerful setups. Alright, well that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.